If your child is attending a summer camp for the first time in the next month, how prepared do you feel they are? If you're like me, when my then 5-year-old wanted to join a science camp many summers ago, I quickly realized that I was not prepared at all. And besides feeling anxious and panicked, I also started to feel very paranoid about who was at the camp. Namaskar parents, I'm Dr. Meghna, the therapist mommy. I'm a child and adolescent psychologist and an internationally certified positive parenting educator. And today I'll discuss important ways in which you should prepare your 2 to 8 year old child for summer camp. Before I became a parenting coach, I was a working mom who only ever left my child with my mom or my mother-in-law. And I didn't think it to teach my child about abuse prevention because they were always in the care of people I trusted. But they grow quickly and time passes in a flash. And the next thing you know, they're off to school or a daycare or a camp where they're in the care of others for hours. So how can you make sure your child is prepared to know, to be safe? Talk about these things. One, body safety. Talk about safe and unsafe touch. Safe touch is any touch that I've given consent for or that makes me feel comfortable. Talking about touch as safe or unsafe rather than good or bad touch removes the guilt from the child and keeps them from having to make a moral distinction about what is and is not appropriate. Second, use age-appropriate wording. Teach young children that no one should touch them in any area that their bathing suit covers and that they should never touch anyone else in these areas or see pictures or movies that show those areas. Three, use correct words for genitals, even for young children, so that if they disclose inappropriate touching, it will be clear what they are talking about. Penis, vulva, testicles, vagina, clitoris, anus, nipples. Talk to your child about the functions of these parts. If your child is exploring their body, don't shame them and instead talk to them about privacy and safety. Fourth, don't think that teaching about stranger danger is the best way to prevent sexual abuse. In the vast majority of sexual abuse cases, the offender was known and very often trusted by the victim's family. Sexual predators investigate incredible amounts of energy into creating a persona of a trustworthy person in order to have access to children. Abductions and abuse by strangers represents a very small percentage of sexual abuse in children. Fifth, use the word surprise instead of secret. Talk about healthy surprises such as a surprise trip or a surprise present. Explain how surprises should be fun and everyone should know about the surprise soon, unlike a secret which may be unsafe. But what's an unsafe secret? Explain to your children that sometimes people ask kids to keep secrets because they're doing bad things. Make it a regular discussion with your child as your child's ability to understand the subject grows. Sixth, reassure your child that them telling you won't result in punishment. Child predators often tell children that they'll get in big trouble for telling anyone what's going on. Make sure your child knows they won't be punished for telling the truth or revealing any secrets. Seventh, help your child establish their safe circle. Have your child name five people that they could talk to if someone was touching them in an unsafe way. Children are often afraid to tell their parents out of fear of punishment or because of a threat made by a perpetrator. So it's important for your child to know that they can seek out other trusted adults to confide in. Instruct your child that they should keep telling until someone helps them. Eighth, revisit this safety talk often. Children learn through repetition. How many times do you need to remind children to look both ways before crossing the street, right? Now, do you know how to do your due diligence to find out what's the summer camp's abuse prevention policies, right? Do you know how they screen their volunteers or employees or teachers? Do you know how to talk to your camp about the abuse prevention you are doing in your house? If you rush to teach this or practice it, it is not fair to your child because they won't absorb it all in a flash. Kids need time to learn and practice. This is my invitation to you to start now. April is Child Sexual Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month and it is time to be proactive. This is The Therapist Mommy signing off.